Chapter 1, Part 1 of the Boy Scout Aviators. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Kangaroo. The Boy Scout Aviators by George Gerson. Chapter 1 Serious News. Part 1 as long as I can't be at home, said Harry Blake, I'd rather be here than anywhere in the world I can think of. Rather, said his companion Dick Mercer. I say, Harry, it must be funny to be an American. Harry laughed heartily. I'd be angry, Dick, he said finally, if that wasn't so English and so funny. Still, I suppose that's one reason why you Britishers are as big an empire as you are. You think it's sort of funny, and a bit of a misfortune, don't you, to be anything but English? Oh, I say, I didn't quite mean that, said Dick, flushing a little. And of course you Americans aren't just like foreigners. You speak the same language we do, though you do say some funny things now and then, old chap. You know, I was ever so surprised when you came to Mr. Brentford, and he let you in our troop right away. Didn't you even know we had Boy Scouts in America? asked Harry. My word, as you English would say, that is the limit. Why, it's spread all over the country with us. But of course we all know that it started here, that Baden Powell thought of idea. Rather, said Dick enthusiastically. Good old bathing towel. That's what they used to call him at school, you know, before he ever went into the army at all. And it stuck to him, they say, right through. Even after Maid King, he was called that. Now, of course, he's a lieutenant general. And all sorts of a swell. He and Kitchener and French are so big, they don't get called and nicknames much more. Well, I'll tell you what I think, said Harry soberly. I think he did a bigger thing for England when he started the Boy Scout movement than when he defended Maeve King against the Boers. Why, how can you make that out? asked Dick, puzzled. The defense of Maeve King had a whole lot to do with our winning the war. That's all right, too, said Harry. But you know that we may be in a bigger war yet than the Boer War ever thought of being. How can a war think you, chum? asked the liberal minded Dick. Again, Harry roared at him. That's just one of our funny American ways of saying things, Dick, he explained. I didn't mean that, of course. But what I do mean is that everyone over here in Europe seems to think that there will be a big war sometime. A bigger war than the world's ever seen yet. Oh, yes, Dick nodded his understanding and grew more serious. My potter, he's a VC, you know, says that too. He says we'll have to fight Germany sooner or later, and he seems to think the sooner the better, too, before they get too big and strong for us to have an easy time with them. They're too big now for any nation to have an easy time with them, said Harry. But you see what I mean now, don't you, Dick? We Boy Scouts aren't soldiers in any way. But we do learn to do the things a soldier has to do, don't we? Yes, that's true, said Dick. But we aren't supposed to think of that. Of course not, and it's right, too. But we learn to be obedient. We learn discipline. And we get to understand camp life and of the open air. And all the things a soldier has to know about sooner or later. Suppose you were organizing a regiment. Which would you rather have? A thousand men who were brave and willing, but had never camped out, or a thousand who had been Boy Scouts and learned half the things soldier had happened to them. Which thousand men would be ready to go to the front first? I never thought of that, said Dick, mightily impressed. But you're right, Harry. The Boy Scouts wouldn't go to war themselves, but the fellows who were grown up and in business and had been Boy Scouts would be a lot readier than the others, wouldn't they? I suppose that's why so many of our chaps join the Territorials when they are through school and start in business. Of course it is. You've got the idea I'm driving at, Dick, and you can depend on it that General Baden-Powell 
had that in his mind's eye all the time, too. He doesn't want us to be military and aggressive, but he does want the Empire to have a lot of...